Hello, how you doing? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Uh, what is your name? My name is Taryn Jones. Hi, Miss Jones. How you doing? Good, thank you. Um, what borough do you live in? I live in Staten Island, New York. And um, how long have you been a foster parent? About two, two and a half years. And what agency are you with? A New York Manhattan agency. Okay. So tell me, why did you come to FPA Foundation today? I came because I'm a foster parent and I'm in dire need of assistance. I've had a ch two children with me for about two, going on two years now. One of them was abused and he has an injury to his head and he may go up for adoption. And uh, due to the fact of not an uh, error of my own, but an uh, error made by uh, Con Edison, they basically uh, cut off my lights yeah, the day before yesterday, or yesterday, or whichever day. And um, this was the same day that um, the foster, parent, foster care agency was supposed to do a visit. And then I had canceled it due to the fact that my husband wasn't feeling well and we had to take him to the doctor. And I had unfortunately sent a text message to the worker because, you know, we text back and forth. And we also communicate by phone, but we text back and forth. And I had just got used to doing that because I knew she would see it. And um, they had removed the children from my home. Um, they said due to the fact of safety issues, which I understand, but it wasn't in my intention. I did everything in my power. I asked them, we still have another apartment that the children had resided in before, and I asked them, please, if it's possible, can we take them there? It was a no-go. I also asked them, can a friend of mine who is a backup, who was also a foster parent with their agency, um, is it possible if she can keep them? They said no, because her home now is closed and she's attempting to go to another location. I asked them if I was able to stay in a hotel, and they said no. So I'm here because I'm asking for help from FPSA. I'm sorry, FPSA. So I'm here because I love the boys. They may go up for adoption. And um, we are a different culture, but we respect their Mayan and Guatemalan culture. And we're still keeping, you know, certain traditions and foods. You know, we're trying to do our best in their home. We love them, and we don't want to see them go anywhere else, anywhere else that they may not receive the same love. You know, we fought for the baby to come to us, and my son and Marvin, uh, the kids are the same age, you know, and they're like twins, and they love each other. And um, I don't know what to do. I'm not sleeping. Uh, I'm nervous. They get anxiety when I go to the bathroom. They cry even when the parents are there and I'm there. You know, sometimes the security guard has to come by the bathroom door where the stroll is just to calm the children down. Um, do you think that your agency has supported you as a foster parent with their agency? I think to some extent, but I also feel that, I don't know if it's intentional biasness, but I think that, you know, they said maybe this is an opportunity, you know, and I'm not perfect. You know, I've made a couple of mistakes, but nothing was intentional, and I've tried to, you know, cooperate with them as much as possible, and I'm just asking them for one more chance, you know, to please not remove the children from my home. They're coming from a beautiful neighborhood, and now they're not in such a beautiful neighborhood, and that is traumatic for them to be in a home where they don't know these people, the food is different, you know, the whole environment is different. They wake up to hugs and kisses every morning and we say salam alaikum to them. We give them a hug and we speak Spanish. Hola, como esta? We have fun. You know, my son turns to the Spanish channel, you know, on Saturdays because he knows Dora and everything is on, you know, and we love him. And Marvin, when they came to the home, when the first child came to the home, he was injured and he had a helmet on his head. You know, he had a very bad injury due to whichever situation occurred with him. And, um, I stayed and I did everything I can do. So now he's running around and breaking everything. You know, his eye was a little different now. It's wide open and he's looking at me. He's speaking clearly. You know, he says, I love you. He, they, you know, he wasn't saying certain things, you know, and I love him. And he loves me. And his brother loves me. And my family loves him. The first day when he came in my house, we had balloons everywhere and a welcome sign. And he clapped his hands when he walked in the door. And, you know, he looks just like my son. You know, and if it was my kids and it was a nice person out there, I would want somebody to fight to get them because it's not easy to find parents that love the kids. And my family, we genuinely love the children. And I'm not perfect, and I'm here to have this advocacy agency help me help them to have a good life. Um, did your agency tell you about our organization? No, ma'am. How did you find out about FP Foundation? I was in a panic. I was nervous last night couldn't sleep because I was thinking about the children and I was just searching online and I found the agency and I wrote down the numbers and you know every piece of information and I called and they welcomed me with open arms.
Um, what message would you like to share as a forced parent going through this situation? What do you think needs to be done um, as far as changes in the child welfare system and the way that they are treating the forced parents? I feel that the kids are not a number. They're not where the foster parents who really care, they're not just beds. You can get anybody to take a child in, but you got to get people in with hearts. I think there needs to be a bit more compassion. And I think for certain people, which I feel that they've tried, you know, because I have made some errors, like I said, but I'm not a robot, you know, and I'm a mom with four kids and uh, I love them. And, um, I feel that they have to have more compassion for the children and the parents who are compassionate towards these children. These children are not a check and they're not a bed. These children need love and any parents who are going to care for them and guide them in the right direction in life. Okay. And, you know, I love them and somebody, anybody out there hears this, help me. You know, any agency that wants to help, help me. Any lawyer that wants to help me, please, I welcome it. Thank you. Thank you.